Hello everyone, welcome to lab 11. In today's lab, we will go back to using the Motion Studio software and we'll demonstrate configuring and operating the Mobi Drive with a slightly more capable application module than what we did back in lab nine. The configuration side of this lab will be similar to lab nine. So if you haven't watched those videos, I recommend to watch those before this one, since I won't be repeating some of the things taught in that lab. However, this lab will introduce some new information because we will not be using the digital inputs to set different travel positions of the motor. We'll instead send the set point position and speed over the ethernet field bus. To keep this demonstration as simple as possible, we won't be using an upper level PLC to set the field bus data. Instead, we'll use the built-in control interface of the application module to manually set the field bus words. If you're unfamiliar with field bus controls, you may need a short introduction to a common way it's used. A lot of field bus networks will have a gateway or PLC as the upstream device, and then one or more inverters as the downstream devices. These will be connected together over an industrial network and will communicate with each other using what's called process data words. There will be process data words going back and forth between all of the devices. So the process data that comes from the upper level device to the downstream device are called process output words. And the downstream devices will send information back to the upper level device with process input words. The application module that we'll demonstrate in this lab will have three process output words going to the downstream Mobi drive, and we'll have three process input words going back to the upstream controller, which will be our computer in our demonstration since we aren't using a PLC. Now, three words is not a limitation. It is possible to do more or less process data words depending on how the Mobi drive is configured and the limitations of the hardware. Also, if there are multiple VFDs, each one doesn't have to receive the same commands. It is possible to send unique commands to each one at the same time, so there is flexibility there too. In general, there are two types of process data words. I do need to point out that the examples we'll see here are specific to some of the Mobi Drive application modules. These configurations of the process data words can vary for different application modules and devices from other manufacturers. So reference the manual of your specific device to confirm the setup of each word. The first process data word we'll discuss is the bit type. The bit type process data words are 16 bits in length and are common for the control and status word. The control word is where the upper level device will send command instructions to the Mobi drive, and the status word is information back to the upper level device about what the Mobi drive is doing in response. Each bit will be assigned a different function, and the function is activated or deactivated with binary one or zero states. Similar to how the switch box needs specific inputs to be either on or off to operate the Mobi drive. The next type of process data words you'll see are integer types. These are common for the speed set point and current position feedback. For example, the speed set point is usually sent as a whole number over the process data and the unit is commonly RPM, millimeters per second, or some other preferred unit. Shown above is the binary conversion of 1000 RPM, but instead of each bit being a separate function, this 16-bit word uses all of the bits to represent a whole number. These integer type words can also hold the current position as a positive or negative value. And here's an example with a millimeter position but it could be a different unit as well. The process data words in this example are 16 bits in length. So that means the integer range is from negative 
32,768 to positive 32,767. If you're wondering why the negative range is one digit larger than the positive range, that is because of the 16th bit, which is labeled as bit 15 since bit counting starts at zero. This 16th bit is used as the positive or negative sign. So when the process data word can be negative or positive, that is called a signed value. If the value is positive, then it will only use bits zero through bit 14. Bit 15 will be turned off. And if the value is negative, then bit 15 will be turned on to represent the negative sign. Now, if a 16-bit word is too small for the value range that you need to send over the field bus, there is another application module that we have. This is called extended positioning via bus. This application allows you to set a 32-bit position instead of a 16-bit position. And it does that by combining two 16-bit process data words into one long process data word for the position. This application also adds additional process data words for the acceleration and deceleration time, bringing the total to six process data words in and out of the Moby Drive. We won't be demonstrating this application module, but I wanted to make you aware of it that you have an option here if you need a larger position value or the ability to change the acceleration or deceleration using the process data. Now that we've shown examples of process data words, let's get specific about the application module that we'll be demonstrating in this lab. The bus positioning application module is configured to exchange three process data words in and out between the upper level device and the Moby Drive. So process output one is the control word, process output two is the set point speed, and process output three is the target position. And the Moby Drive will send the status information back upstream where process input number one is the status word, process input number two is the current speed, and process input number three is the current position. This application module is field bus based, so it will use a different control method than what we saw in lab nine. So I need to point out the features that you will see on the screen. There are two modes of the simulator screen. If we leave it in monitor mode, we can use it as a tool to view the process data going between the upper level device and the Moby Drive, but we won't be able to manually override any of that traffic. If we need to manually control the application using the simulator, we first need to switch to control mode. I will mention that when you are in control mode, you will need to use caution just like you would when you are in manual mode because your computer will be taking full control of the Moby Drive and you need to make sure that you don't do anything that could present safety risks or damage machinery. Once we're done with control mode, we have to switch back to monitor mode to allow the upper level device to take back over control, just like we have to do by exiting manual operation when we're done. These boxes at the top of the screen show the hexadecimal equivalent of the information that is broken out below. If we are in control mode, then the changes to the process output data don't happen immediately. We have to press this send PA button every time we want our changes to be sent to the Moby Drive. This is the control word. And if we are using the simulator to send the data, we can click the dark green circles to set the functions we want to use. Here is the breakout of the status word. We don't have control of these bits here because the Moby Drive sets them automatically depending on how it's being controlled. So this side of the screen is just for viewing. Here's where we can set the speed and target position. This is status feedback of the actual speed and the current position. Since this application module uses the field bus to control it, 
there aren't many digital inputs needed. So here is the status of the digital input assignments. The dark burgundy color means that the input is off and the brighter red color means that the input is on. And this display here is to give a graphical representation of the actual motor position. And just like lab nine, the green arrow will move to match the current position. Before we head to the software, I want to explain the bits of the control word since there are some differences than what we have had to do previously with the digital input switch box. Starting on the right, we have this bit for the controller inhibit. Now we will still have to set the hardwired DI00 inhibit like we've seen throughout the previous labs. You can still see the status of those down in the bottom left of the screen, but don't get confused by this inhibit bit. It is not mandatory like the physical DI00 input. The purpose of this bit is to put the Moby Drive into an inhibit state, even if the physical DI00 input was still switched on. If you don't want the Moby Drive to be inhibited from the control word, then you can leave this bit off and just toggle the physical DI00 input to turn the inhibit on or off. The next two bits are the enable bits. Both bits will need to be on at the same time to enable the mode drive. But depending on which one is turned off, it will use a different deceleration ramp for the motor. One uses the normal ramp time and the other uses the rapid ramp time. You can modify those ramp times in the parameter tree of the Moby drive. The jog bits are to alternate between clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. Similar to lab nine, this field bus application module will use two bits to control the different operating modes. Depending on the combination of the bits, it will switch between jog, reference, and automatic positioning modes. Since this application only uses three process data words, the ramp times are alternated from this bit if more than one ramp is needed. The two ramp times are set during the initial commissioning of the application module. The start bit will be just like how we used it in lab nine, where some modes don't operate until the enable and the start bits both are set to on. If a fault occurs, those can be reset by toggling the fault reset bit. You can also leave this bit switched on along with the enable bits to tell the motor to back off of the hardware limit switch, like we demonstrated back in lab nine, where it has a feature to clear from contacting the hardware limit switch by leaving the fault reset turned on. Okay, now that we've shown the operating screen of the application module, we will end part one of this lab here. In part two, we will be in the Motion Studio software to commission and demonstrate the bus positioning application module. Thank you for your attention. Take care and have a good day.